Hello and welcome to the next episode of Patch Tennis. This is game one, Mini Freak versus Hydrosynth, shot number three. So first, what is Patch Tennis? Well, Patch Tennis is a series where me and another YouTuber, in this case, YouTuber Macaron After Party, will take turns going back and forth, sending patches and performances of those patches to one another they will send what I call the incoming patch, to which I will make a response. The response is intended to be similar in function, but not necessarily in sound. And then I will make what I call my return, which will be a completely freeform patch that I will make however my, I choose, and they will then respond to that. Why exactly are we doing this? Well, we're intending to show the actual real-world use and workflow of a couple of synthesizers. I'm going to be using the Hydrosynth Explorer, and they are going to be using the Arturia Mini Freak. So without further ado, let's listen to the incoming patch. I'll try and be quiet, at least first playthrough, and then I'll probably talk some more. So first, I can hear some pitch motion there. It sounds like something is going up in pitch and down. It sounds stepped, so um, some sort of, I think, quantized pitch source. I can also hear a clear opening and closing of the envelope as we hear a brightening of the sound. What else can I hear? Um, I can hear a little bit of um, movement happening, so I think there's some effects going on here. And generally I would call it a pad. So I think that's probably enough for us to get started with. So let's jump in to making our response. As always, init patch. Since I want the pitch to go up and down, or generally move, I'm going to use a stepped LFO here. Since the first two LFOs are normally rooted to the filter and the amplifier, I'm going to skip those and start with LFO 3. So LFO 3, um, I'm going to go BPM synced, just so it's convenient if I need it to line up with anything else. I want it to be stepped. I want it to be synchronized. Although probably I want single synchronization. So what that means is when I'm playing multiple notes, while I'm holding more than one note, the LFOs will be synchronized. When I press again, the LFOs will restart. In poly mode, each one would begin independently. So I think single is probably more appropriate here. Now I'm using it for pitch, so I'm going to turn on semi-lock, which means that the pitches are locked for semi per semitone. And I'm going to, how many steps am I going to use? Probably quite a few. So let's bump this number up to 32 steps. And I'm gonna write in here, maybe even 48, hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'm gonna write in an ascent and descent. So let's just turn this down. So this is probably gonna be rather boring. Minus eight, minus seven. Probably not the greatest thing to be spending my time on while I have a time limit here, but Nonetheless, I've gone for it.
Now I guess I didn't account for zero being doubled, so I actually need one extra step in my sequence. So this is going to give me an ascent and descent, and I'm going to use this to adjust the pitch of oscillator one. I'll set the... Um, in fact, I probably want this to go up and down from true pitch. Let's hear if this sounds too high pitched. Way too slow. Um, so by direction, um, unidirectional, so it's only going to adjust the pitch upwards. And let's increase this rate to maybe even let's see sixteenths maybe. Oh, Thirty seconds is probably better. And I don't think it should keep going up and down, so I think I'm going to set this to one shot. And the reason that I set it also to um, be unidirectional is I want to end and start on the same pitch. If I had it starting at the center, um, what would happen is it would be trying to sound here, it would go up, it would go down, and then when the envelope stopped, uh, when the LFO stopped, it would jump back to the central pitch and it wouldn't be the note I played. So this ends on the note that I played, which I'm happy with. So now I think I'm going to get um, probably two oscillators. I may have the third one not moving, and I might have these moving in counter directions. So possibly what I'll do is I will, because that movement is two octaves, what I might do is have one of them an octave up and one of them on pitch, and then one of them is going to move down and one of them is going to move up. So I have this one moving up. So let me let me set this to zero this here, and let's bring in the second oscillator. So now let's look in the mod matrix. Oscillator one is coming up in pitch. So now um, I'm going to use the same LFO. Oops, sorry about that. Same LFO to oscillator two pitch, and it's going to go again unidirectional. And I'm going to have it go the other way. Sounds quite confusing because they're overlapping. So we start hearing as though one of them's going up and one of them's going down. Let's adjust now the sound of the oscillators. I think maybe that's a little bit strong. So let's try this tri saw. And maybe I'm going to bring these even further out. So let's say oscillator one, what if it was an octave down? And oscillator three, I'm going to set in the middle. So now let's bring it up. So there's some interesting and somewhat confusing behavior about single trigger and one shot. So when I'm playing this, I'm going to have to play I'm going to have to play chords in unison. Perfectly fine, but something that we need to be aware of. I'd like to add a little bit more character to the sound, I would say. So I'm going to think of adding some ring mods. So I'm going to go into the mixer and I'm going to solo the ring mod just so I can listen to it. I'm going to turn it up. So let's turn all of these down and let's try and balance the volumes quickly. I think that works, so minus 12, 12, 0. So now I'm going to... I think that's working, so now let's envelope this a bit. So this is the amplitude envelope. I think that a little bit of attack, not too much. Maybe a little decay, definitely some release. Okay, 
Okay, so now let's do some of this um, analog, which is going to detune slightly. And I think overall, this sounds too low pitched to me. So I'm going to try and bump all of these up an octave. So this is going to be sounding above by two octaves, just so this middle register sounds better for me. And I think what I'll also do is I will try and use the fifths rather than going all the way out the octaves. So if this is up 12, this one I can tune it down by um, 5 to there, and this one can be tuned up by 7. Let's try. Okay, so now we need to get some filter motion going here. So, filter, firstly, um, I think 12 dB is going to be good. Let's just listen. So I think what I'd like is maybe a slightly longer attack than we have on the amplitude. So let's um, let's double that to, well, two seconds is good. Uh, maybe even a longer decay. And then the release, maybe a little bit longer too, but I'm gonna pull the sustain down to zero. So now I'm gonna turn the amount up. a little shorter. So now I'm going to add a little bit of sustain here. Another thing that I think I'm missing is maybe a little bit of noise just for some character. So I feel like the pitch sweep is a bit too far. So what I'm going to try and do is set these amounts to 50%. And this will mean that it's actually going in, um, instead of semitones, quarter tones, but that should still work for us. Let's just listen. And I think I'd like that moving even faster, so let's try 60 volts. A bit slower. Let's make this decay longer, sustain lower. So now let's add a little bit of effects in here. So first thing, I like the sound of that flanger. I think I'd like a little bit of pan going on there. So I'm going to pan oscillators one and two out a little bit. I'm also going to pan the voices out a little bit. So some stereo width. I'm going to turn on this warm and random phase mode. It's a little bit too wide.
I'm getting short on time, so <laughs> I can just move forward. Let's put some delay on, maybe. Um, Let's add a little bit of reverb. Sounding interesting, maybe one of these post effects. Uh, let's try this lo fi out. So, what I'm going to do is turn the sample rate up high. we have something there. It's definitely quite different. I would like to adjust the sort of timbre that we've got going on with these oscillators, but I think we've captured something of the general sound. So now I'm going to play it against the video that we saw before I go on and make my return patch. Um, so I'm just going to play something in real time as we watch, and let's go. Okay, so now let's jump in to doing the return patch. So this patch, I have freedom to do whatever I want. Last time I went for something of a pad and I was trying to get a sound that made me think a little bit of a synth string. This time I'm gonna go for another classic sound, which I think is a pluck. So, um, how are we gonna start? I think, saw wave is, Always a good starting point for something like this. And first I think I'm going to shape the amplifier envelope. So, let's close that. So I might change the shapes of the curves here a little bit. Um, I might make the, yeah, so I might make the decay a little bit less steep. And I made the release a little bit more steep. So that sounds interesting. I think. What I'm going to do here, since this is going to be a fairly simple patch, I'm probably going to go back and I'm going to add some macro controls. So while the ARP is playing, I can do some manipulation. So first, let me just get the basic sound in place. Um, you know, I'm going to use the filter to give us a more plucky tone here. So let's close it up. Filter's closed. And let's make a similarly shaped envelope here. So let's say one second. Half a second, shut that down, and then let's open this. So 
So that's basic, but I think it, it works for us here. So one of the things that I want is a way of shifting the timbre of this as it plays. I think I could do that by... shifting the balance of the strength of the envelope versus the initial cutoff and adjusting the resonance, maybe adjusting the drive as well. So I'm going to go first for that adjustment that I just described. So I'm going to go into macro assignment, editing the macro, and the things that I would like to adjust First is something to do with the filter. Second is something to do with the filter. And third is probably also something to do with the filter. So the reason that I entered those there is on the home page, when there are no mappings, you can't set the macro value. So I've now set the macro value to something. So when I go to edit it, I can hear the effect of changes that I'm making here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to open the filter and actually let me put that on the first slot. I'm going to open the filter and then in the second slot I'm going to use the envelope amount and I'm going to decrease it. And then the other parameter I said I wanted to adjust was the resonance. So let's listen to how that sounds. Now it's been assigned all the way down. I think I'd like to take it even a little further than that. So what I might do is I might filters closed. I might even close this a little bit more. And then I'm going to have to correspondingly, in the mod matrix, uh, sorry, in the macro mode, I'm going to turn up the resonance a little more, and I'm going to do this a little less, and open this a little more. So now let's listen to that. It also gets louder. What I might do is turn the drive up and have the macro turn the drive down a little bit so as the volume doesn't change that much. So let me go to edit that. And again, I'm adjusting a filter parameter. I'm adjusting the drive and I want it to decrease. Okay, so let's see how that sounds. So since this is going to be something which I'm probably going to just latch and play, I'm going to latch it now. So arpeggiator on, latch on. So I've got it in randomize. Let's try the macro. Surprisingly, I'd say I already quite like the way this is sounding. It's not particularly complex, but I think it gives us um, a fairly enjoyable sort of timbre. So to make it a little more complex, I'm going to bring in the second oscillator. So I think I'll probably turn down oscillator one a bit. Second oscillator. So I think one timbral change I might like is a sort of detune where I'm going to bring these two away from one another. So let's start a second macro and it's going to adjust oscillator one and oscillator two. Let's go to the home page and turn that up. Now let's listen. Let's listen to the effect. I 
I might actually bring in Oscillator 3 at pitch, so it's just going to sit between the two of them. So what I'm tempted to do here is have a parameter that brings oscillator 3 up but closes the filter at the same time. So macro 2 is my detune. And then macro 3 is going to bring up the third oscillator. So let's do that. So macro assignment, macro 3, assignment in the mixer, on 3, let's just go and turn it up for now, macro assignment 3, I like that, sounding good, and now to correspond with that, So I've got the extra punch from the extra oscillator, but I'm taming it a bit by closing the filter down. So let's listen to that movement. Okay, uh, pretty interesting. Might have a little bit of oscillator three, even without the, the macro being turned up. So I'm going to turn the depth down a little bit to counteract that. That'd be good. So now I'm going to add a little bit of this analog instability. I'm going to randomize the phase and use warm mode because I'm thinking of a sort of analog synth plucky sound. Stereo image. So that randomization I like. I can hear everything jumping around in space. Tempo's a bit fast. Faster. I also might have a macro that's going to shape the envelope a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is extend the decay and release on these things, and then the macro is going to bring it back. So that's going to be, I'm going to double the lengths here. Which I like, I like that ringing out. And then I'm going to have a macro that's really going to dial that back in. So I've adjusted two parameters on each of these. So this one, oops, and this one. Okay, so the parameters that I'm adjusting are decay. And these I want to decrease. So let's turn the macro all the way up. Let's go back into edit. Obviously a bit extreme. Nice. <laughs> I didn't do exactly what I meant there. And this one should be release. And this one should be decay. But in any case, I, I like the sound of that. So let's try turning this down.
so now all we need is some effects. Um, I think an obvious one to start this might be some chorus. So now I think an important one is going to be delay. So this is playing in eighths. So I think the stereo delay works for me. Let's add some reverb. Try a plate maybe. So I think we've got something fairly interesting here. Maybe if I had the full-sized hydrosynth, I'd be more inclined to add more macros, but having to go between pages, I think is maybe inconvenient. So let's experiment with this a little bit and play with the macros. Okay, so I think I'm generally happy with how that sounds. So what I'm going to do is offline, I'm going to record a performance of that patch. I'm going to set it to a video and I'm going to return it to Macaron After Party, who will then respond to my patch. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. I hope the premise is interesting and I hope it's somewhat illuminating with respect to what you can do with the Hydrosynth Explorer and what you can do with the Mini Freak. Most importantly, though, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining me today and goodbye.